Now, as you may have already seen um, the rod cutting problem, the problem is that we are given a table like this with the length of um, rods and the corresponding prices. So we have this table consisting of PI. Um, and um, what we would like to do is that the problem is to determine the maximum revenue, Rn, obtained by cutting the rod and selling the pieces. Um, and, and, and if there is no cutting needed, and if that is what gives us the best price, then we don't cut at all, right? So that is the rod cutting problem. Um, we, we are, um, say for example, you're given a rod of four inches, right? Um, and um, a, a price table below. Um, the question now is, um, what should we do? Should we cut the rod at all? Or if we should, um, how many pieces and where should we cut it? So the price for a rod of length four is um, $9 here, right? Um, so if we cut it into smaller pieces, let's say if I cut it into um, four equals three plus one, then the amount of money I make is, uh, this is $8 plus dollar uh, one. This is similar to the $9 we have. So it makes no sense to cut whether we cut or not, it's the same thing. Say if I cut it into four equals to two plus two, the amount of money I make is $5 plus $5, right? So obviously, um, if we have a rod of length four inches, then um, the, the, the answer should be four equals two plus two, uh, which gives us a revenue of um, $10. But the way we solved that problem was using our intuition. Now, algorithms don't have the intuition. We have to elaboratively or explicitly come up with all possible solutions before we come up with, an, with, with the optimal solution, right? We, with an optimal solution. So let's look at all possible ways of cutting a rod of length four. So if, there, if we have a rod of length four, that gives us a dollar nine price if we don't cut it at all. This is one possible configuration that we have, or like in you know, one possible scenario or one possible solution we have. We may we could cut the rod in the first um, after the first inch, uh, which will give us a, a, a one inch piece and then a three inch piece, giving us the same nine dollars. That is the second way. So this is first um, solution, second solution. Here's the third solution that gives us ten dollars total, right? And here's fourth solution. We could also cut the rod all the way at the end. So what we just saw is, since the rod is of length four, there are three possible places we could cut. If we cut it at the first place, um, this is what we get, um, second place and the third place. Now, assuming that we have cut it at the first place, we could further cut it um, either in the first place or in the second place. So this gives us two additional solutions. Now, considering that if we cut it in the middle, um, the possible uh, uh, solutions we get is we cut it in the middle and then we um, cut one more time um, in the third place. Then we could all cut it into equal four pieces. And this gives us all the eight possible kinds of um, cuttings that we could do um, on a rod of length four. So, Overall, we can see that um, for a rod of length n, there are two to the power n minus one different ways to cut it. So if we have a rod of length four, which is, um, so n equals four, we saw that there are eight possible ways to cut it. So this basically means we have two to the power four minus one equals two to the power three um, possible um, ways of cutting the rod. So overall, what we see is that there are, even for a rod of length four, which with human intuition, we could easily solve it um, to algorithmically come up with an answer. It is a lot of enumerations that we have to go through. So the solution to the rod cutting problem can be expressed in a table like this, where um, the first two columns are the input table itself that are given to us, right? So the input tables, and then um, this is your, um, this is these two are the part of your solution, right? Solution. Um, if we have a rod of length one, we don't cut. So N stands for no cutting and the revenue we get is $1. If we have a rod of length two, 
then we also don't cut it. The revenue we get is $5. If we have a lot of length three, then um, we also don't cut it. We get a revenue of $8. If we have a lot of length four, then we cut it into two plus two, right? And we get a revenue of $10. If we have a lot of length five, there are various possible ways in which we cut it, right? But the one that gives us maximum, um, like in a sort of revenue is uh, two plus three or um, three plus two, each of which give us um, eight plus five, um, 13 dollars and so on. So um, here's a complete table um, where um, if we have a rod of um, length one, um, the maximum revenue is, uh, is, is $1, $1 um, and there is no cuts involved as it is. Similarly, if we have a rod of length seven, we cut it into one plus six or we cut it into two plus two plus three, gives us the same thing and so on, right? So this is how we can express the solution to the rod cutting problem um, for, for various, various um, length rod inputs. Now let us try to define the rod cutting problem formally. So given a rod, let's say of length n, and uh, let's say the revenue that um, comes out of this rod is Rn, um, the optimal revenue, this optimal revenue Rn can be expressed as the maximum of the price of the entire rod itself, that is Pn. So in other words, Pn stands for making no cut at all, right? So if we didn't do any cuts at all, what is the price we get? So this is one possible value. The next possible value is that we make a cut at the first place, right? Then after we make a cut at the first place, we sum the revenue from the first piece and the remaining piece. So this is your revenue Rn, R1, and then here's your revenue Rn minus one. So this is next possible answer. So revenue of a rod of length n, optimal revenue for a rod of length n is maximum of either the rod as it is or two pieces of rods where the first piece is only one inch and the second piece is the remaining inches. Or another possible scenario is uh, the revenue from a piece, a first piece of two inches and then the remaining inches, right? This is the third possible answer. All the way when we try all the way to the end where we cut at n minus one position and what remains is the last one inch. So our optimal revenue is the maximum of all of these revenue values, one, two, three, da, 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 all the way um, to n or n minus one. Where now um, this, this Rn, R1 plus Rn minus one um, refer to a cut so that we have the rods of length one and another piece, remaining piece of rod um, n minus one. So, you can see that this is a little bit tricky because um, we have a recursive definition here. In other words, what we are saying is the revenue for a rod of length n depends on the revenue from a rod of length n minus one. In other words, the revenue can be calculated for a rod of length n if we can calculate the revenue for a rod of length n minus one and so on. So we could squeeze this um, definition into a more compact form where we say the revenue for a rod of length n is the maximum of the revenue for a rod of length i plus the revenue for a rod of length n minus i. Now what this means is what we are looking at here is i could go from one to n initially when i is one what we are calculating, the first term of this, um, becomes P1 plus Rn minus one, right? Where we are saying that um, we make a cut at the first place where um, P1 is the price of the first piece, first one inch, and Rn minus one is the revenue of the remaining inches. Then as we, so this is the, the first cut that we make at the first place, as I increases, this gives us the second possible scenario, third possible scenario, all the way when i equals n, that is when 
all the way when i equals n, what we have here is Pn plus R0, right? In other words, this is the price of the rod itself without doing any cuts as well. So this becomes a Pn. So Rn is simply the maximum of all of these possible values. And here Pi is the price of, law of the rod at length i, and Rn minus one is the revenue of the rod from length um, n minus one. So clearly, this is a recursive, um, like an implementation of recursive um, approach to defining the rod cutting problem. Now, interestingly, just with the help of this recursive definition of um, revenue, we can quite easily um, come up with a recursive solution to solve the problem. That is, uh, if we wanted to find out the optimal solution, then we can simply take this definition as um, our like in you know, a sort of theoretical solution and then convert it into an implementation. Here's how an implementation looks like. All we have is a um, rod cut function that takes the price table as the input. This is your array of prices, right? And the length of the rod that you would like to cut n as input. So if n is zero, that is if you have a rod of length zero, you return zero. Otherwise, we say that our revenue is some extremely large negative value, right? Um, then we try to cut the rod at every possible place. So we start with i equals one to n, that is where i starts from the first place that we can cut, i equals um, two, three, and so on. And for every cut that we make, that is for, for each cut that we make, what we do is we calculate maximum possible revenue by, by doing, is it um, like you know, helpful or, or is it, uh, uh, is it better to make the first cut? So when we have i equals one, we make the cut at the first place. So then we say, what is the maximum of our current um, revenue that you have? In this, at the beginning, this will be minus infinite. Um, and so this is the current best that we have and this part. So here what we say is, price of this current piece, that is I, PI, which is the price of the first piece that we have, in this case, this is P1, plus rod cut P N minus I. So now what we want to do is obtain the best revenue for the remaining piece. That is, um, here this will be N minus one remaining length. And this gives us the revenue, best optimal revenue, optimal um, revenue for the remaining piece. As you can see, this is a recursive function. We have rod card calling rod card itself, but every time it calls, um, it passes um, a smaller piece of the original n length long input rod to eventually get to the point where the rod cannot be cut any further. Now the implementation of the broad cut, recursive rod cut algorithm is actually straightforward. So here's my price table, right? Where um, the price of a rod of length zero is some very small number, um, which represents a number that's way more negative than any of the positive prices. Price for a rod of length one is one, for two is five, and so on, right? Um, so this is the exact same implementation of the recursive algorithm. We have rod cut, if any length is equals zero, return zero. Um, otherwise, we initialize the revenue to some very large negative value. And then we go all the way from one to n minus one, n plus one, because in Python, if you have a range function by default, if you have um, range one to n, it goes up to n minus one. To make sure that it goes up to n, we have to make it n plus one, right? So that's, that's, that's a Python caveat. Um, and then we have the maximum revenue Q equals current maximum plus PI, and then we call the rod cut algorithm at n minus one. So as is straightforward um, as that. Um, say for example, if you wanted to trace the algorithm for let's say when n equals four, what happens is we have our price table, we have input n, is n equals to zero? No, so then we initialize Q to 
this really large negative value. We start from n equals to one. So when this is our original input, we'll with n equals to one. For i in range one to n plus one. So we start with n equals, we start with um, i equals one. We set q equals to maximum of current q. So this q becomes maximum of, this is almost minus infinite, comma. Pi, now since i is one, this would be price of um, a rod of size one plus um, rod cut Pn minus one. So um, cut rod, we call it with n minus one. In this case, n minus one will be three, right? So we go back to the function with, uh, so this is where we are left off. Um, with um, n equals three, we check n equals to zero, no. And then we go to this function again with um, n equals three as input. So this is where we are trying to calculate. And then we went back to the function. And in the new setting, we again have i equals one, two. So here n is three, so i runs from one to three. Now we again have i equals, so this i is a separate one, so we, because uh, this is a separate scenario that we are solving for um, n equals four, so n equals four. Now we are working on um, n equals three, n equals three. So i becomes one, and then q is maximum of minus infinite, and uh, p2, uh, sorry, uh, p1 plus rod cut of size two, right? So what is the maximum revenue for rod cut of size two? You will see that as this iteratively runs, uh, what this will um, eventually return is, um, is that, uh, So the implementation of the recursive um, rod cutting algorithm, recursive solution to finding the best revenue is, is actually very similar to the uh, pseudo code itself. Um, we initialize prices, the price table where um, the price of a rod of length zero is a very large negative number. The price of a rod one is one, two is five and so on. So we have the same um, setting where we have a rod cut algorithm takes a list of inputs right here, you, this is your price table, um, and then takes a number n as input, which is the length of the rod, and initializes q revenue to some large negative value and so on. So let's trace this algorithm with say n equals three. When n equals three, we call this algorithm rod card, so n equals three, we call the function rod card, we don't have n equals zero, so then we start i from one. So our i equals one, and then we check um, we try to calculate the maximum of Q equals maximum of minus infinite because this is almost minus infinite. And um, this is P1 plus P1 because um, this PI is now P1 plus um, rod cut that is revenue R of length three. Rod cut with the same price table and this, sorry, N becomes two, R2. So now this is something that we have to calculate, right? Uh, we are stuck here. So we, once again, we call the rod card function with n equals two. And then once again, we go down, we have a separate place in the memory that we are working with, i equals um, one again. So we have to calculate q equals maximum of minus infinite and p1 plus r1, right? Um, so now that we have this, um, we see um, that we have to calculate um, R1. So then once again, we go back um, and then we calculate, um, we, we call the function for n equals one. 
So when n equals one, we have um, n is not equals to zero. So we go from one to one. Um, this becomes q equals maximum of minus infinite to p1, which is basically one. So this one, this revenue R1 returns as one, right? And P1 obviously is also one. So we have um, Q equals maximum of minus infinite and two. So minus infinite and two, the maximum becomes two. So we have Q into two. So remember, this is when we call the function with N equals two. So now this was the first loop with I equals to one. Now, when I equals two, because we have to go up to two, because we actually have to go up to one and um, n plus one, two, we have to go up to two. Um, so when I equals two, then once again, we go Q equals Q equals a maximum of quadrant Q, which is two comma, here PI is P2, P2 plus, now rod cut at position zero, that is no cut at all. So we know that P2 is five. So this gives us Q equals maximum of uh, two comma five, which will be five. So now finally we have finished this loop, we return five, right? So what comes out, comes back from here is R2 equals five. So P1 plus five will be the revenue of the first cut is one, one plus five is six. So Q equals six. So what we have done here is when we have a rod of length three, if we cut it in the first place, the revenue we're gonna make is $6. And how's that? Because the first piece is going to give us $1 and the remaining uh, two inches is gonna give us $5. So one plus five becomes six. So we repeat this again. So we go again from I equals one to two, and then we go from, we go all the way from one, two, three, we run I from one, two, and three, and then we, we test all of these to get the optimal solution. So this is how the algorithm works. Now, can you think of one limitation of the recursive solution that's, that we proposed? Also, if you know a little about recursion, you know that recursive programs are extremely inefficient. Right, so let's go back and look at the limitation of the solution. Um, the problem in the rod cutting problem is to find a solution, solution where the solution should say where to make the cuts, make the cuts. Whereas what this solution does is it gives us optimal solution. That is, it gives us optimal revenue, right? But it doesn't tell us where to make the cards. So it is a solution, but it is a partial solution. So if we were to improvise this code to um, print out where to make the cards as well, what we can simply do is replace this max function with some if statements. And then whenever we get an optimal, you know, whenever we get an optimal cut here, or whenever we actually, um, get the maximum value, we can print the cutting position I as well here, so that we know where to make the cut. And then every time this is called, we know what, how many times or what pieces we have to cut so that we get the answer. But to complete this solution, what we do have to do is not just print the best revenue, the, the, uh, and, and optimal revenue, but also print where to make those cuts. Now let us try to analyze the recursive solution that we just discussed using recursion tree. The, the recursion tree is something that we discussed in the first module. Say we have a rod of length four, n equals four, right? And we know that by definition, um, the recursive um, solution gives us revenue um, using this definition, right? Um, Rn equals maximum of um, pi plus Rn minus one, where i runs from one to n. Now, we see that to calculate Rn, we have to calculate four possible values here. Right. Um, the first value is um, P1 plus R3. P1 plus R3. The second value is P2 plus R2. The third value that we have to calculate is P3 plus R1 and um, P4 plus R0. Right. So you see that for each of these four calculations that we have to do, we have to calculate revenue for at the beginning. We have to calculate um, revenue for a row of length three revenue for a row of length two, 
revenue for a row of length one and length zero. So there are four things that we have to calculate. So once again, to calculate the revenue for a row of length three, the recursion further depends down. To calculate Rn for a row of um, R2, R1, R0. Similarly, once again, to calculate the here, as the recursion like you know sort of winds down inside goes deeper to calculate for uh, to calculate the revenue for a row of length two it goes down to calculate r1 r0 and so on so you see that there's a lot of repetition that is um, because of the way recursion works uh, we are calculating the revenue for a row of length two here and we're also calculating it here in other words the total number of revenues that we are calculating for a row of length um, four is um, you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and this itself is sixteen so we see a pattern here we we, we see that for a rod of length n um, the total number of um, revenue calculations we have to do is one plus two plus four plus eight plus da 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 so this is a geometric series as you can see where uh, the number of calculations you have to do here is is um, two to the power n in terms of two to the power n right so we can say that the running time of this algorithm is exponential in n in other words um, your running time t n is two to the power n so for a rod of length four your two to the power four um, becomes uh, approximately 16 and and so on so now you have to remember that this this running time two to the power n is is a really really terrible running time here's a comparison of how two to the power n looks like compared to any square solution so here's your any square solution and you can see that the two to the power n becomes as soon as you have n equals um eight um or maybe um nine or ten then you can see that the 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 uh, n to the power two becomes in hundreds and you will see that very quickly it becomes in thousands and so on. So the recursive solution, even though it gives us a solution, is um, has a terrible running time, has, has a really bad um, running time.